Hello friends, this is Shelly from Koala Knits and Knacks. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make these two adorable bunnies. Uh, we will make the one together, of course, but um, the accessories are at the end of the video and uh, you'll want to make those as well. So friends, thank you for joining me. We are going to use our 31 peg loom and our 12 peg loom. I have used a variety of different yarns. They're all either Craft Smart Yarn or Bernat Premium Yarn. I will put a list of the yarn names in the description box below and you can have a look at that and if those are the colors you want then I hope that inspires you. Otherwise just use whatever four weight yarn that you have and uh, it'll be the, turn out to be the same size as that I have made this bunny. It stands eight and a half inches high so it's just a really nice size. I had so much fun making this and I was just thrilled as I went along with it because I just think it turned out so so cute and I hope you do too. So thanks again for joining me. Please 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 take time to hit that like button for me and um, subscribe. I would just I would be so thankful if you would hit that subscribe button. doesn't cost you anything. You don't get any crazy notifications. Um, it just helps YouTube circulate my channel because they know I'm being watched then. So please, please, please um, do me a favor and, and hit that subscribe button for me. Thank you so much, friends. Once you have your supplies, we're going to get right into this adorable project. I hope you enjoy it. All right, friends, so it's time to begin our project. We've got our 12 peg loom and our 31 peg loom. We're gonna take this one and set it aside and we're going to begin with a double strand of yarn. So I have my pink and my white together there, just like that, okay? We're going to make a slip knot and that we are going to attach to our anchor peg, just like that. I'm gonna tuck that one tail down. Um, now, because this is an odd number of pegs on my loom, I'm gonna start by going in front of this first one. And so then it's gonna come behind. It's gonna look like you're not working it, but you actually are, okay? And I'm going to go, if you just push your knot down this way, you will see that it's actually in front there. And I'm gonna go behind peg two, in front, behind, in front, behind, in front, behind, all the way around. Very simple technique to do, but it allows us to be able to draw string closed our end. Okay, now it's in front of that last peg. We're going to now bring it across. We can push all those ones down as we go, okay? Now all we're gonna do is put this all the way across just like that. And we're going to knit off every peg that has two loops. So again, this first one, does not. So I'm just going to hold that with my thumb. I'm going to go to my, um, or this first one does because we, we set it up that way. So just like that. Okay. It looks a little awkward, but it works. Okay. Then the second one, we're going to miss third one. We're going to take that loop over and you'll see as we take that around, you can hold it with your thumb. This next one doesn't have two loops. So you can't work that one. So you'll work the next one, every other peg. And you can push those down as you go, or you can push them down at the end when you're done. Whatever works best for you. Just like so. If you can hear a little bit of um, static in the background, my apologies for that. Um, I'm working in my basement and I have the little floor heater on beside me so that I can be nice and warm as I do this. <laughs> so I hope that's not too, too much of a distraction for you. And we're going to go all the way around just like so. So we're getting around. And I'm going to work off that last pig. And we've done our drawstring cast on. From here, the whole project is e wrapped. So isn't that nice? We push those down at least halfway. I'm going to get that tail out of the way. And we're going to begin our e wrap. So behind that first pig, in front, and back around behind the second one in front and back around now i let this yarn just slip through my fingers i'm not putting any tension on it just letting it take its own make its own tension as we go around so behind and in front behind and in front all the way around this is row one okay coming to the end Now we always work off the last peg first because then it will hold this yarn in place. But for now, you can just take that 
behind peg one and then I wrap it around peg three like that and hold it with my fingers. That's just my practice. Then I go back to this last peg and I work that off. Then I can let this go because it's secured. Otherwise it's gonna unravel all the way around. And then I'm gonna begin knitting off my stitches. So the bottom two loops over the top two loops. Doesn't matter if you grab your loops from underneath like what I'm doing or if you grab them on top like this I can't even do it that way. It's just awkward for me. Lots of people do this. It's just weird for me. I can't do it. <laughs> I have to go underneath and then I put my finger on the peg there as I pull it over and that's just my practice. So I'm going to scoop that up. I'm going to go all the way around. Okay, I'm coming around to the beginning here. This is row one. complete it okay push the rest of those down you can release your anchor peg now because it's not going to go anywhere take that into the center off to the side mark your tally sheet row one our yarn tail is coming out of that last peg so we're going to come behind peg one in front and around this is the e-wrap and we're going to do that one more time all the way around this is row two Wrapping behind and in front, behind and in front, all the way around. Again, this is my last peg. I'm going to put that in front of peg one and just actually do that. I go behind peg one, sorry. And then in front of peg three, just like that. And then I hold it. Whatever way works best for you so that you can hold this still. So you can just work off this last peg. Then you can drop that and away you go. Back around. This is row two. So what you're gonna do, friends, is you are going to do this for 30 rounds. That's it, 30 rounds. Doesn't take long. Put your favorite show on, listen to some music, put a podcast on, or just sit in the peace and quiet. That's always nice too. And work 30 rounds of E-Rap, just like what I'm doing. I'll get you started on the next round if you're new, and then I'll set you free. Round two completed. Push them all down. This time I did the whole row. See, you can do however you like. Work a few stitches, push them down, or do the whole row and push them down. I'm ready now for row three. I'm going to take my yarn tails that are coming off the last peg. I'm going to go behind and in front of every peg. Letting that yarn slip through my fingers with no extra tension. And this is my last peg. I'm gonna go in, uh, now I don't know what I'm doing. I'm going behind peg one and I go wrap around peg three because <laughs> I'm talking to you. But however you do it, again, like I've said several times already, it's fine. Just wanna secure that in place so that you can get that last peg net off and then you can let it go, okay? This is row three. I'm going to complete row three and I'm gonna continue this process till I have 30 rows of e-wrapped pegs done, okay? So you keep going, friends. Finish 30 rows, and when you're done that, we will get back together and move on to the next part. Have fun. Enjoy the process. These little guys are so adorable. All right, see you soon, friends. All right, friends, welcome back. Uh, if you're with me now, that means you finished your 30 rounds. And look at it. It's just looking so beautiful. Double strounding, it just makes it nice and thick. And we're not going to see this, the fiber through when we stuff it. And it's going to just be wonderful. So you're going to take your yarn. You're going to wrap it around your, your loom one and a half to two times. I think I did two here. Then you're going to cut it off. That will give you enough to um, cast off with, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to put our yarn tail underneath the loops on the first peg, we're gonna put our hook in there. We're gonna grab those two loops as though to purl, and we're gonna pull them through. You can also put this on a needle and go underneath all of them, under and up. Um, but this is how I usually do it, okay? 
circle on, on those two yarn ends and pull them through. Go to the next one, put it underneath. Go through that loop from the top down, pick up those two yarn strands, pull the loops through, and then grab them and pull them through. Now, I always leave this first one on, but if you want to loosen this a little bit, you can take a couple off as you go, okay? So in through the top of that loop, scoop up those two yarn tails, bring them through. Scoop them up and bring them through. I'm gonna remove a couple, just one there for now, okay? And we're gonna keep going. All the way around our loom. And again, when it starts to get tight, you just take off a few of your, your um, stitches off your pegs, leaving peg one intact, because I always go back and I do that. I think it closes up the circle a lot nicer. Okay, so keep going. I'll show you, actually, I'm gonna show you the other way before I go off. If you would rather do it with a needle instead of a loom pick, you just thread your needle. And then you just go up on your stitch and move over to the next one. It's actually a little bit faster, but sometimes I, when I'm done my project, I just keep going with my loom pick and, and uh, and just finish it off that way. But either way works, okay? All right, so now I'm gonna put that down. I'm gonna go, I'm going to take some of these off to give it some slack. And I'm gonna continue around until all my stitches are removed. And then I'll, when I get to the end, I'm gonna, after I do um, peg 31, I'll come back and show you what I do with peg one. And, uh, and we'll have our project off the loom. So keep going, see you in a minute. I have made it around. This is my last peg. I'm gonna go back over to peg one and do that one one more time. And then I can go ahead and remove all the rest of the loops off the pegs. Such a cute project, but you know what? Being that it's e-wrapping all the way um, through the project, it's actually a pretty quick project to get through, um, and yet so adorable. So I'm gonna move, remove that, because we're, we're done with that loom. We're gonna use the uh, smaller loom from this point on, okay? We're going to take our work and we're going to stretch it widthwise and lengthwise, just to soften it up, get all those stitches in nicely positioned, and look how beautiful that is. I hope you can see the little you know, detailing with the white and the pink in there. Just like with the blue one, I'll just put this closer. I used like the, the mid-tone blue and a light blue. And I, I don't know if you can see it as much in the camera, but when you use two colors like that, one's just a very little bit lighter than the other, it just looks so, so rich looking. It's so beautiful. Um, again, I don't know if you can catch that detail in the camera, but if you have the opportunity to do that, then, then I would do that. Otherwise, use just two regular strands. But it does look nice when you have um, two really close colors together, one a little bit lighter. I could have done two different colors of pink on this as well, but um, with, with a baby pink like this, I think white looks great with it. So what we're going to do next is we are going to close up the bottom of our piece. So I'm going to take that yarn tail. You can see where your stitches where the wide parts of the V. If you take a close look, let me grab my needle. Here's my, here's my stitch. The point of the V is here and the wide part is going up. That's how I want my project to be, okay? So that means that this is the top, this is the bottom. And I'm gonna, so pay, pay particular atten close attention to that. It's just a little detail, but I think it looks nice that way, okay? We're going to cut this off just a little bit. So not so hard to work with. We're gonna grab our needle. Now I'm using these aluminum wool needles. They have a little plastic um, end, so it's easy to, to th um, thread them. Then we're going to go ahead and close up this bottom piece. Don't cut this off too, too much though, because now I realize that I'm going to use it to make the legs, and so I shouldn't have probably cut it off. I probably still have enough, but um, don't cut it off too short. We're going to go around that top row of, of stitches just like that. Pull your needle through, and then pull smoothing it out as you go because you don't want to you want to make sure that the it's nice and smooth as you go around the 
around the circle. It'll give you a nicer finish. So again, I'm going to pick up some stitches around that top row. And I'm going to pinch and pull. Smooth out a little section past that. Pick up some stitches and pull. Don't pull so tight that you risk breaking your yarn tail, your yarn end because um, with a double strand, it, it's harder to harder to do. But seriously, when I make um, single strand items, especially on my Addy Circular Knitting Machine, and you can check my channel for that. I've got many, many videos on the Addy Circular Knitting Machine. If you don't have one, watch some videos. You might want to get yourself one because they're so much fun. But when we um, pull tight our, our beanies, for example, and they're just one strand, very often it's easy to break your strands. So with this one, it's going really well. And because there's two strands, it's not quite so easy. Uh, which is good but we're going to keep going and I'm going to just because it's pretty thick I'm not going to try to get all the stitches in now I'm going to just skip over a few and I'm going to pick up a few that will help me to close it and then pull I'm going to skip over a few and just pick up a few okay and we're going to do that till we get this piece closed at the top. That should do it actually. One more I'll do. And then that will be totally fine. Pull on that. And you see how that's closed now? I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to make a knot. And I only have to do one because I'm going to continue sewing with this piece of yarn so it'll be totally fine. Now what you're going to do is you're going to grab your fiber fill. Before we can do any more, we need to fill our um, project with fiber fill. So I'm going to grab it. Being careful not to overstuff. When you stuff your animals and your project goes like that so you can see the stuffing through you have way too much stuffing in you don't want to see that you make for it makes for a much more professional looking piece if you um stuff it only so that it doesn't compromise the pulling like the stitch the rows okay so i want to get it in there nicely i'm gonna push it in through those little dents that are the little ridges that are coming from my gathering. I'm going to push it in all around with my fingers. See, just it helps that look better too because I'm, I'm actually filling in these little these little ridges. If you if you don't intentionally do it with your fingers, it doesn't smooth it out as nicely. Okay, so go ahead and do that. I'm going to put a little bit more in there. And a little bit more. Okay, now we're going to close up the top, but we're not going to close it tight um, because we're going to still need to work with the face, okay, with our positioning our eyes. But we need to do this so that we can go ahead and separate the, the head from the body and then do the legs. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pull on this just so I can get it almost closed, but not quite. Just like that is good. Gives you room to put some stuffing in there if you need to add more. Then I'm going to just go ahead and make a little knot like that just to hold it in place. Okay. So it's like we got this little bean. <laughs> okay. So it's stuffed nicely. We're not compromising the rows. They're still, they're still um, nice and close together. We're going to then take two pieces of our, of our yarn. So grab your yarn ends again, two strands together. All it has to do is go around the piece one and a half times, okay? Cut it off. We're going to then put this on our needle. You can use a bigger needle if you like. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go 14 rows down from the top. So you're gonna count this, this is your first one here, then two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, and 14, okay? And I'm going to pick up that first half of the stitch. Pass my needle through, leave a tail. Then I'm going to go to the next one. Just take the first half and the first half 
and the first half and the first half just like that all the way around if you're wondering am i on am i you know if 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 you can't tell if you're still on the 14th stitch then every once in a while just count down from the top and that will help you stay in line okay see because now i'm going is it this one or is it that one I, it's obviously this one but sometimes if this is just stretched a little the wrong way it's hard to see so you want to you want to make sure so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, and fourteen. Okay. And then you will make sure that your row is perfectly even. We're gonna keep going all the way around till we meet the other side. And then I'll see you back. I've made it all the way around. Now I'm gonna take these two ends. I took my needle off, and we're going to tie them. Okay. To separate the body from the head. Now this looks funny yet because it's going to be tighter. Um, I don't want to, sometimes people will go like this and just tighten them. They look like two little circles, one on top of the other. You don't want that. You want it to just look like a neck. So tighten it. Let me show you the other one. I've tightened it, but it looks like a neck. It's not, it's not so tight that you've got, it looks like two separate pieces. Okay. So that's what we, what, what we want to accomplish here. So I'm going to just about like that. Okay. Then you grab one of your children or your husband or whoever to come and help you tie a knot if you have a hard time that one went fairly easy but sometimes i wish i had three hands <laughs> i'm going like ah, i try to tie this and then it just keeps coming undone okay then i'm going to cut this off i'm going to go ahead and put these ends on my needle and you know once you have this this little guy finished if you decide it's not tight enough you can go ahead and just take um, another piece of yarn or just don't hide these yet. But I, I, I know that it's good. Like I, the way I, I positioned it, I know I'm going to like it. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to hide these. Pull up on them. Cut them off. Now my body and my head are done. And you can see that this is going to be tighter. So it's going to make for, it's a little bit smaller section than this section. But we're still going to leave that for now. We're going to go down to our section down here. Okay, so maybe grab um, another needle that's a little bit bigger. These ones are got all fuzzies in them because I use them constantly. We're going to go ahead. We're going to place our yarn tail onto that needle. I could have grabbed even a bigger one. This one I think may even be the same size that I had. And then from there, we're going to put our needle. Here's where our center is. We're going to just go up about an inch from the center. And go straight across, straight across, just like that, see? And you're going to pull. And you're going to pull that tight, and you're going to go over and into that same space, just to begin with, and into the same, out the same space where you went from um, the front, okay? Now we're going to pull that tight. And from there, we're going to go up, straight up. So you're going to find your center, which is what we're on. And you're going to go straight up, but rather than go between the two, um, between the two rows, I make sure that I'm in the middle of a row because I, I think that it gets a better hold then. And then I'm going to come out the back, doing the same thing, going through the center of a stitch, and I'm going to pull on that. See how that's taking shape? I'm going to go back to the back, and I'm going to go down because I I can I went up here and out here so I have a space here that needs to be worked so you're going to go back down into that space and up to the top of that stitch just like that don't panic if you're saying where is she going with her needle what's she doing all you got to do is go back and forth to make sure that you fill in that gap um, and then you pull tight I'm going to go up a little bit farther one two stitches and then into the back, up two stitches, following that same row. And you see how this is where I went in. So I've got this part here that wasn't worked. So I'm going to go back down. And then up to the top of this stitch because it's worked. All across, okay? And then I'm going to come out and I'm going to pull up. I have to determine how far I want my legs to be. I'm going to grab this other little guy. I went a little bit further because I thought that one worked perfect. I'm going to go two more, two more um, stitches up and then come to the back, do the same thing. 
then come down and out where I at the top of that it's my other hand stitch there we go pull that through and pull I think that's perfect okay so I'm gonna just measure that for you from the bottom to where I stop is two inches okay so that'll give you a general idea how, how far to go then I'm going to poke that back down into the into the back come out on that same seam and work my way down to the bottom back down coming out in that same seam working my way to the bottom one more time Just like that and pull give it a good snug perfect 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 so sweet okay and then all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just pick up a strand stick my finger in there so when I put some pressure on here to pull it through that I don't lose my loop and you're gonna tighten it do that one more time Give it a good tighten and push down that knot with your thumb. Then go right into your piece, go under your stuffing, pull that out, pull up, cut off. Then you can take your needle and pull up on this so that that end is hidden. Isn't that precious? Isn't that precious? Okay, so now we know where our head is. Um, and now we know where our legs are, how far our legs are. So we, we have a center to know where to put our eyes. So um, we wouldn't have put our eyes on first because we might have had it off center. So it's best to do it it's, um, after you finish your legs. But you know what? I'm going to do it after we finish our arms. So we're going to leave this little guy aside. Um, and we're going to grab our 12 peg loom. You're going to grab your two strands of yarn one more time. Well, more than once because we're going to make two arms and two ears. So grab your yarn and we'll make the arms. Taking our two pieces, we are going to make a slip knot to go onto our anchor peg. Isn't this fun? Such a fun project. Just love it. I made both of these in one day, so, um, and I've, I was doing other things too. <laughs> so, I mean, it's taking, it'll take me longer to edit the video and to, you know, get it ready to send, but you can, you can easily make two of these in, in one day, okay? I'm going to do an E-Rock cast on. So behind that first peg, around, behind, in front, around, behind, in front, around, just like what we did for the body. Okay, we're gonna go all the way around. Okay, gonna push that down. Somebody made me aware of the fact that I say the word okay so often. We've had this discussion in my Facebook group and you all told me it'd just be me, but now I'm totally conscious of it, conscientious of it when I say it and I realize, yikes, I say it a lot. Okay, so we're gonna wrap again. This is our cast on. You don't count our cast on. We're gonna keep going. Knit off our last peg. Then we can release that yarn end and we're going to knit off. Bottom two loops over the top two loops, just as we did for the body. Okay. Push those down. Now we're ready to do our row counts. So we're going to e-wrap and then knit off nine rows after my next row i'll release my anchor peg but again all we do is go behind and in front and around behind and in front back behind just like this all the way around i like to put my loom on the side actually like this and this is how i wrap knit off the last peg first then you can drop your yarn tails and knit off you're gonna go ahead, you're gonna do this for nine rows. When I have my nine rows, I will see you wonderful people back. 
I have completed my nine rows. I'm going to wrap my yarn around my loom one and a half to two times. Then I'm going to cut it off. And we are going to cast off. Okay, again, you can put it on your needle and do it that way if you like. Or you can just use your tool. Pull it through. Go to the next one from the top down of that those two loops on the top. Scoop up those two strands of yarn, pull them through. Again, from the top down, scoop them up, pull them through. Do that all the way around, then do peg one, one more time, just to seal off the circle, just to, to join it all, and remove all the loops off the pegs, and go ahead and then make your second arm, okay? So you're gonna cast on, you're gonna do nine rows, you're gonna cast off, and you're gonna do two of them. Okay, see you back when you're done, my friends. All right, friends, how did that go? So we've got two arms, but I've already placed one on my project, um, and I'll show you how to place this one, but we're going to, we're going to um, close it first. So this is the end, that this is the last row that we did. This is where we cast off our project. We're gonna take that, we're going to pull it nice and tight so we have a beautiful closed end like that, okay? Then we're going to take our needle and a thread, and we're gonna go around that top row of stitches. We're gonna just reinforce it. Just around once. Like so. Okay, then I'm gonna just tie one little knot. Push that down with my thumb. I only need one because we are not finished this piece. We're what we're gonna do next is we're gonna do the mattress stitch to close it up the side. So we're going to fold this in half. We're gonna fold this in half so that we have the wide part of our stitch. So this is our stitch right here. We've got the V here. We've got the wide part of the stitch going to the left. So I'm going to choose a row that's like that and I'm gonna fold it over to this other side and I'm gonna find a row that's similar. So if you have to twist it just a little bit, you can, um, but it's, it's easier if you have the wide part of the V going to the left on both sides. If you can't, because it's very hard on these small pieces, it's, it's, um, it's okay if, if you, if you work it the other way with, you know, if you don't, aren't that particular, but it's just easier to get in the stitch if you have it that way. I'm going to take this across and I'm going to join it just like so. Then for the mattress stitch, what we're going to do is we're going to go into that first stitch here, okay? Into the very center of it. We're gonna pick up that first bar from there. Then we're gonna go one more stitch and pick up that second bar, just like that. Then we're gonna pull it through. I've got too much yarn on here. I'm gonna fix that right after I get through the stitch. Cause I probably just confused you big time, but let me see here. I've got way too long of a tail on this needle and it was getting caught. So let me just, Cut it off just a little bit here, and we'll continue on our merry way. So we did, we picked up two bars on this side. We're going to go into that first stitch on this side, and we're going to do the same thing. We're going to pick up two stitches just through the center of the stitch, and we're going to pull that through. Then we're going to go back over, and where we came out is right here, okay? It's so hard to see with this yarn. Right here, and we're going to pick up that bar, and then the bar of the next stitch, okay? There's two strands on each bar, and then we're going to pull that through. Then we're gonna go back over to this side and we're gonna go in where we came out. We're gonna pick up those two bars and then those two bars. It's called the mattress stitch or the invisible stitch. Then we're going to pull on that. So pinch the, the top and pull on it and it'll close it up nicely. Then you can see that this is where it's coming out of this stitch. I'm gonna go into there. I'm gonna pick up two stitches. Again, on this side, pick up two. And back over to this side following that same row, pick up two, and pick up two. Then I'm gonna stop and I'm gonna tighten it again. If I was using a single strand, it's easy to, to, you could do this whole length and then tighten, but because we've got a double strand there, that makes it a little bit more difficult. But you see how this is just bringing it all together and, and you can't even tell that it looks like a tube that, uh, that was never 
you know, a flatter piece. So we're going to take those two. So essentially we've taken a 12 row tube and we've made it into a six row tube just by joining those just like that. See, beautiful. Now we've got this up to the top. What I'm going to do is I'm going to just take these two and I'm going to tie off a knot just to secure. That's once you've pulled all your stitches so that your rear row has closed. Okay. Then I'm going to take this one that's not on my needle and tuck it into that center. Just like so. So if you stick your finger in there, you can smooth it out. But I'm still, because it's already, it's already very um, thick and beautiful, but we're going to still put a little bit of fiber fill in there okay so you're gonna go right into the center there and you're gonna pop that down into the tip of the of the arm just push it on down grab a little bit more that might be a little too much there we go just like so now I'm going to take my needle and I'm going to just close this up a little bit just like this and I'm going to find where my seam is so I'm going to find the part that I don't like the most this this is probably uh right here was where peg 12 and peg 1 join there's always a bit of a bigger gap there I can't even see where I sewed it here anymore so it really doesn't matter but if you have a piece that you don't like more let's just say that I don't like this piece this this Part more and I want it to be against the body I'm going to put my needle I'm going to trail my needle over to over to whatever row so actually let's do this one so you can see what I'm talking about I'm going to tra tra trail my needle over to this row this is the one I want to be on the to be against the body because I want to make sure that I position this in the middle of this piece so then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to just tie a knot to secure so this is my middle this is the back and I like it in the middle because then when I put it on my body, on the body, all I got to do is line up the middle of the leg, go right up to the neck, grab a little bit of stitches there, one row of stitches, pull on it, and I've got the middle of the arm in the middle of the leg, and it's perfectly centered. This is the part that I wanted in the bottom. So I'm going to turn that. And then from there, we're going to pick up the very top layer of this arm making sure you go through all layers because we didn't close it off we didn't need to it's it's a small piece you don't have to go right close to where your last stitch was in the neck pick it up and then so you need the middle stitch there attached you need one more and then just one more on this side so I go down to that first row of stitches that's right on the arm there I don't pick it up here I want it here because then I get a more rounded shoulder so I'll show you what I mean I'm going to pull that then I'm going to put it into my neck. I'm going to come to the middle. And when I pull on this, did you see how that rounded? If you didn't, back it up and look at it again. By going down one stitch, it pulled that in and I don't have a sharp edge there. And it looks, it's just a much, much nicer finish. Okay, so now I'm going to go back up into this one, making sure I get all the layers. Come back into the neck. Okay. And then I'm going to grab the first row here, just like that. Then I'm going to take it into my neck and I'm going to go out the other side so that I can pull it. So watch how that, if I was to just sew it straight on like that, I've got a straight edge. But if I pull on this now, I'm pulling that, that shoulder in and it gives me a rounded look and it's much, much nicer. So now what I got to do is I have to see if I positioned it the right way. I never tie off. I never tie a knot off until I can see whether or not I have um, positioned my arms right. I'm gonna just tighten that just a little bit, a little bit more. I think that I went back a little bit too far in there. Well, maybe not. So what I'm gonna do is, I, I don't need to take this whole thing off. This is a quick fix because it's just 
just a very little bit. I'm going to go into that stitch on the side there one more time. It needs to come to the front just a very, very little bit. Then I'm going to pick up this stitch right here. One a little bit over, and then I'm going to pull it, pull on it. There, now that's perfectly matched. Reinforce that, take it back in. Now I'm going to go back to the other side because I always like to make my shoulders rounded. That's perfect. Okay, that's that's all it took. So now that I, I have seen them and I know that they're in the position that I want them to be, I can go ahead and I can knot them off. Secure them really nice and tight. Pull down on that knot. Then take your needle under the fiber fill and out the body. Pull up on it. Hope my hand's not in the way. Cut it off. And there you go. Do the same with your other one. And when you have that finished, I will meet you back. All right, so there we have our little bunny coming along and you know what because we didn't close the end here you can go ahead and stuff a little bit more into there if you did I went and pushed some of my um, stuffing down into the belly to make it a lit just a little bit more um, full but you don't want to put so much in that your stitches start to come apart like that because then you take away from the whole look of your project so be very very uh, aware of that now what we're going to do is if you need to stuff a little bit more you can close this a little bit just to see where you're at and determine whether you want more and I think the way I have it is, is perfect. Um, I'm going to take my safety eyes. Now, I know that there's a lot of controversy around using safety eyes. Um, and I generally will use the mushroom buttons that I can sew on with, with yarn. I literally sew them on. But I don't have the right size uh, left in my, in my um, supply. So I am going to use these. I really truly don't know what size they are. I think they're a 9 or a 10. But you use whichever ones you like best. We're going to find the middle and then we're going to have three rows in between. So if this if this is the middle, I'm I'm going to I'm going to take these three rows that are going to be in between my eyes. Okay, so I'm going to have my eye on that row and on that row. And I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five, six six down on my other one I did seven but I think seven's too low on this one for some reason I'm going to pop that in making sure it goes between the stitch not between the rows between the stitch because you will get a better a better um fit there it, you'll you'll it'll be less chance of it coming undone I'm going to take this over to my glue gun that's over on the other side of my room plugged in I'm going to put a bead of glue all around there and then I'm going to pop this on okay and I'll show you when I'm done I don't think you're going to be able to see but I took my glue gun and I, I squirted glue right on top of this black thing and it went all around the black and I pushed that down as hard as I could it will not come off they're not going to be and, and you know what they're not going to be able to pull it out of the stitch either because the glue is stuck to the uh is stuck to the fat to the yarn as well so I really feel very secure in, in that decision. It's not going to come up. There's no child that's going to be able to take this out. I promise you. <laughs> if you do it the way I just did it. So now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put the other one on the other side. And then I'll meet you back again. Those are nice and secure. They're, they're like seriously, I will re-emphasize, they're not coming off. So if you do it that way, I, I think that you can rest assured in knowing that um, they are not going to come off with even if a, a little mouth is chewing on it, it is stuck right to the yarn. Okay, so now we're going to close up that top. Make sure that you have the amount of filling, fiber fill that you want. Okay, and we're going to go ahead. And we're going to reinforce this closed. You know what, I did these on row six and now that I'm closing it up, I don't like it as much. Go seven rows down. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's what I did for this one, and I should have followed my heart, but when I closed this, I thought that this was better. But six or seven rows, whichever you think looks better. Um, maybe do a trial run, like maybe close this a little bit tighter before you decide to place your eyes so you can get a better visual as to where it's going to be, and um, that will help you. But I, I think row seven is probably better than row six. But I can't take them off now because they're secure. <laughs> so we're going to just leave it. 
and uh, it'll be just as sweet. I'm gonna go around, I'm gonna reinforce this, I'm gonna tie a knot, then I'm gonna hide my ends. Then we're gonna go ahead and we're going to make our ears. They're so fun to make too, and they're easy to make, and once they get on, what a difference. Our little bunny is going to come together. So go ahead, finish sewing this on, grab your 12 peg loom and your two strands of yarn one more time, and we are gonna go ahead and make the ears next. All right, so for the ears, you're gonna take this little loom that we've been using, and you're going to take your um, pink and your white yarn, whatever color, two colors you're using for your ears, you're gonna do an E-wrap cast on, then you're going to do 18 rows of E-wrap, and then you're going to cast off just how we've been doing all along and make two of those. So E-wrap cast on, 18 rows cast off. And when you have that done, I will be back with you. Alrighty, working on our cast off edge, we're gonna pull that tight, smooth it out, and we're gonna do what we've done many times already. We are going to go ahead and we are going to reinforce this just around that top row of stitches. A little bit more. Pull that tight. Tie off a little knot. This one you're going to want a double knot because we won't be using this yarn tail anymore. Okay, double knot it like that. Pull that down with your thumb, then you can go right into that center with your needle. Grab it with your other hand. Oh, it's tight. Double strand of yarn is, is much harder to work with. There we go, and pull it through but it's so beautiful. Pull it through and then you've got that nicely hidden. Okay, you can just tuck that right inside, cut it off a little bit if that helps you, then tuck that right inside. Broke my nail, no I didn't, that's glue gun. Used a lot of glue. Then we're gonna go up to the other end. We're going to put that yarn end on our needle. You'll know after your first bunny if you've cut these too short. <laughs> I should have left them a little bit longer. I hate long tails. They get in my way, as I'm sure they do for you too. And they're just like a nuisance. So I um, I generally cut them off short, but then I realized I, I needed it longer. So we're gonna just sew up this end. So I'm just gonna go through those two, the top loops there, pick them up on that side and come across. We don't, nothing fancy here. We're just gonna close it. To secure, I'm going to go back and forth this way. The last one we went over top and around. You don't need to do that. We're just going to give it a nice little closure here. Going back and forth. Pick up those last two loops. Tie off a knot. Okay, and now we have just a nice finished edge there. What we're going to do is we're going to put a longer yarn tail on there. Hopefully, the, hopefully yours is longer, but I'm going to add one and I'll see you right back. Okay, so what we're gonna do next is we're going to take that straight edge. We're gonna find where our wide part of the V is going to the left. We're going to take it over to that other side. We're gonna go into that top stitch and just attach these two here, just like that. And then we're going to mattress stitch it down four stitches. Okay, so I'm gonna go into here. I'm gonna pick up two bars. You can, you know what, if you're not comfortable with this um, stitch on a project such as this, you can just sew it together too. Um, it really, it really doesn't matter because this is going to be going against the head, so you're not really going to see it anyways, but I just like to have a nice neat finish. There we go. I'm going to pick up two more. I'm going to go over to this side and I'm going to pick up two more. And then I'm going to pull that closed and I've got my top that I can use. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to knot it off on the same side that I ended. Just one simple knot. And I'm gonna carry this back up, going underneath, carry this back up to the corner. Okay, just like that. 
and then I'm going to just tie one knot here. I always do that. If I carry my yarn from one place to the next, you always tie a knot so that when you pull on this, it doesn't gather in, in there, okay? So then that's what we're going to do to both ears. We're going to take our little bunny and we're going to place it on the top. Follow your arm and match it to the arm and then go just maybe a half a stitch forward. Then you're going to pick up your... Oh, I'm in the camera here. You're going to pick up part of the head, pull it through, go from the top down, getting all the layers. And you're going to sew it onto your head, just like that. I'm going to pick up another little piece. I'm going to grab the stitches across my top there, and I'm going to pull it. I'm going to just take a look at it here. That's perfect. And I'm going to sew that I'll measure from here to here so you can see um, how far down I've done it. But I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to finish sewing this on. I'm not going to tie it off until I have the next one on. Pick up that side stitch just like that. Okay. Oh, that's so adorable. I'm going to go back down there and I like to tie my knots at the back. So I'm going to take that to the back just like that. I'm going to let that hang. There we go. We've got one ear. I'm going to place the other one on. And I'm going to just get, tell you how far I've gone from the center. It's not very far. One centimeter. One inch. One inch from that center point down. That's all you're going to do. Okay? Get your second one on. And then I'll see you back. Okay, I'm just sewing, finishing up the last, the second ear. Oh, you guys, this is so cute. Oh, so soft looking. Can't wait to find a baby to give it to. <laughs> I don't have one offhand to give it to right now, but I'm going to put it in my stash or give it as a gift eventually or, you know, maybe sell it. We'll see. But oh, so, so adorable. So I'm going to tie this off in a knot because I can see that they're even. I like the placement. So one knot. two knots and then I'm gonna hide that down into my work go underneath the stuffing as much as you can and then out the back and pull cut that off we're going to take this one and do the same thing to it again very important that you don't tie off your knots until you know the placement is where you you need it to be that down with my thumb now you're going to want to grab whatever color you're going to want to use for your nose on my last pro on the blue one I used this pink that I'm, I'm using here oh no actually I'm looking at it now I used a darker one and that's the same one I'm going to use for this one I think it's going to work really nicely so I'm going to there we go <laughs> so adorable. I wish I would have put the eyes down just a little bit lower, but you know what? Once I get the nose on, it'll be, it'll be fine. So grab your yarn of choice, the color of choice that you want for your nose, and we're going to do that next. Burnett Premium in Pink Macaroon is what I'm going for, but you know what? A black would be nice with this one too. Um, it's really whatever your preference is. I'm going to take this up from the side of the head. We've got these three stitches to work through. So I'm going to come up. I'm going to go in through the center of that one stitch on the one, two, third row. Then I'm going to go down into the center of the stitch that's in the other. Like I'm going to cross one, two, three. I'm going to go down into that stitch that's right across from it. Then into that middle section, I'm going to come out at the point. Just like that. Go across. Then I'm going to come back up to this point. Under the stuffing, up to this point. And I'm going to come back down to the point. 
of the nose. I like to make my triangle before I start. So there we go into that point. I use this as my guide. So I am not going to do my stitches underneath here. If you watch any of my videos, you know I go over top. I do not like to see a line there. So I come down. I'm going to go right up into the corner there that's above that line and I'm going to pull this through. I'm going to come down into that point, go right above that line, right beside where that last stitch was. And I'm going to pull through. I'm going to use my thumb or my needle if I put, place my needle right on this side of this stitch and then let it guide, it'll go right beside it. Then you don't have all these stitches one on top of the other and it looks messy. Comes right beside it. So I'm gonna go back down into that, into that point, up right to the next, right beside that next stitch, or that last stitch. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna pull my yarn through and I'm gonna place my needle there and let it just fall down right beside it. Okay, I always come back and I do one more on this edge. It's always needed for some reason, but back into the point, up above that, that line, which is my guide, and back down. See, it came right down beside it. I'm gonna go back in. I'm gonna come up to this side now. I'm gonna work a couple on this side. Or you can put your nail there, that's generally what I do, and let it fall beside. Just take your time. Make sure that it's neat, that your lines are all straight, that you don't have a bunch of overlapping um, lines that make it look messy. Back down into the point, and if your point starts to get squared off, just go down a little bit further and it'll make it pointy again, okay? Put my thumb there, let it fall down over so it goes beside. See how neat that is? We need to make sure we take Attention, we have attention to detail on stuff like this because it will make your project look so much more professional. Okay, you want it to look as nice as you can get it. I'm gonna come up there, place my thumb as my guide. I'm gonna go down just a little bit further here, just a smidgen. Come up, let that fall into place. Go back down. I'm going to come up to this side here. Do one more on the side just to make it even. And again on this side here too. And I'm not pulling tight as you can see. And you can see right here, one's a little bit shorter than the other. I see that and it will bug me. So I'm going to go down and I'm going to come back up here. And I'm going to go just above that last one. that nicely um, did the sides, okay? Then I'm gonna come back down to the point and I'm gonna go down two stitches and come out the center. Okay, see how that fixed that little hole that was there? I'm gonna repeat that one more time. I'm gonna go into there, come out at my point, down there. So that's one. I'm gonna have it double-stranded, go back in, and I'm gonna come out under my stuffing, come out where I went in, just like this. And that, my friends, is beautiful. Now I like the eye placement, <laughs> okay? We're going to give this a knot, making sure that when you tie it, the first one that you do, you don't tie it so tight that it pulls on this, okay? The second one that you do is the one that you wanna make tight. Put that back on your needle, Underneath the stuffing, out the back, cut it off. And there we have a beautiful little chubby bunny. I'm gonna play with these ears, soften them up a little bit and then they'll fall better, but we're not done. We still have we still have our little headband that we're gonna put on this little sweetie, okay? But we're going to, uh, I'm gonna leave it at that for tonight because I've been working all day and I'm tired now. So I'm gonna do that next part tomorrow, which you won't have a clue because it's all gonna be in the same video. But there you go, my friends. I hope that you're enjoying the process. Um, I think that these little things are, these little bunnies are just like absolutely adorable. Just absolutely adorable. I'm gonna do one more thing before I call it a night. I'm gonna see how tall they are. Eight and a half inches. 
beautiful, beautiful size for little hands to hold. All right, so today is another day. Hello, my friends. We are going to add our little pom-pom tail. I'm using my Clover pom-pom maker, the green one. It's the third in the set of four that I have, the third largest. And the number on the back, in case uh, you want to compare it to which one you've got, is 65. Okay, so I am not going to do a full tutorial on this because you can go to my channel and look up how to make pom-pom on a clover maker, but I will show you that I've wrapped this side 115 times and that side 115 times. And I'm just using one color of yarn, okay? Then I'm gonna go ahead and take my scissors. I'm gonna show you partially. I just didn't wanna do the wrapping part on it, okay? And we're gonna cut that. And we're gonna go ahead and cut this side. Oops. And then I've got a double-stranded piece of yarn that's like that. I've got my closed loop here. I'm going to put this around in there. Then I'm going to put that those two yarn ends through that loop, just like that. And then I'm going to pull. And I'm going to pull. And I'm going to pull real hard. Then what I do is I take these two strands and I wrap one one way and one the other way. And I'm going to tie a really tight knot. One, don't pull so tight that you snap it. You don't want to do that. And two, okay? So now my pom-pom is secure. And somebody's, so, I've, so many comments, seriously. Some people say, well, if you can pull the strands out, then the pom-pom, the, um, and then you open them and pull this apart. If you can pull the strands out individually, which I'll show you in one second, like this, then your pom-pom's not going to hold and it's going to come apart. That's wrong because... And, and don't don't be um, scared about that because if you tie it as tight as what I just tied it, once we cut this all up and make it nice and beautifully round, because I always shape my pom poms, I get them beautiful. You don't want to leave it like this. This is not nice. Okay. Um, yes, if somebody if the kid is going to sit there and start pulling on strands, or if you start pulling on strands, common sense is it's going to come out. Okay, and you're gonna you know lose your pom-pom but nobody sits there and pulls on strands and you can you can throw this in the washing machine with your with your beanie um and not worry about it seriously it's tight okay so that's just my thoughts on the pom-pom uh worries that some people have if you tie it tight enough like what i just showed you attach it to your project and don't worry All right, friends, I'm happy with that, okay? So now what you're going to do is you're going to take your little bunny. You're going to take your needle. Just take one of these strands, one of the two that you have. And then we're going to place it one, two, three, four. Four stitches up. And I'm going to go under that stitch, grab some batting, and I'm going to pull this through. I'm going to then take this other yarn tail. And I'm going to go the opposite direction, under the batting, pull it through. Then I'm going to grab both, just like that. And these do not need to be that long. Oops. And then I'm going to tie. Get that underneath the pom-pom, under those threads. Give it a good tie. That's one. Under the threads, two. Three, and then I'm going to just cross it over like this. Go under those yarn strands, cross it over again, come back up. And I'm going to tie it again. Okay, then all you have to do is cut these off to be the same length as your pom-pom strands. And there you have it. Isn't that adorable? <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and see, and then you can sit up that way too. <laughs> so that is all finished. All right, so I have to make one for my blue bunny as well, because I haven't done that yet. Then if you just assess the situation, if you need to do a couple trims, then you do that. And your little bunny is absolutely precious. Okay. All right, so we are going to make the flower now. So I've got a double strand of yarn. I've got pink and purple. And we are going to put a knot on our anchor peg. We're going to go behind 
that first peg in front of the second. We're going to do um, a cast on in such a way that we can pull this um, tight layer and gather it. Okay, so it's in front of that last one. I'm going to go now in front of, of the first peg and the second peg and the third and the fourth. We're going to just straighten it across there. Where's my loom pick? And every second peg will have two loops. So we're going to take the bottom loop over the top loop. Okay, we're going to go to the next one, which is this peg. This one we miss. It only has one loop. We'll go to the next one. We'll work that. We'll carry our yarn in front and on top all the way around, just like so. And we will knit off. This is our drawstring cast on, okay? Now we're in front of peg, the second last peg, and we're gonna go to in front of the last peg there and we're gonna knit it off. Now we're at the beginning again. We've finished our drawstring cast on, so now we are going to, you, you, um, pardon me, e-wrap. So e-wrap around that first peg, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, and 12. Uh, knit off that last peg first, like what we've been doing before. We're going to knit off all the way around our loom, all 12 pegs. Then we're going to e-wrap six more times, okay? So that's for a total of seven rows. You do your drawstring cast on, you e-wrap and knit off seven rows. So this is one. Push them down. After the third row, I'll release my anchor peg. And this is two. And I'm gonna do that for seven rows. And on the seventh row, I'll see you back. I've got my seven rows done, just like that. And now we're going to cast off. So you're going to, again, two times around your loom for length. And a little bit longer because we're going to need this for shaping our flower. Okay. And we're going to push these part way down. And we're going to cast off just like what we've been doing before. Underneath that first peg loop and then pull it through. Under the second scoop it up and pull it through all the way around. Do the first one again. So end on this first one and then uh, remove your project and we will see you back. I've got it off the machine, off the loom. I'm going to stretch it and then we're going to just take one side and we're going to cinch it. Okay. Just like so. Thread your needle. We're gonna just go around that perimeter, that first row of stitches, one time to, to strengthen it. Then what you're gonna do is you're gonna pop this needle in through that center hole. Take it into the other side. And pull. You're going to leave that and you're gonna take those other two and you're going to do the same thing. You're going to cinch that up nice and tight just like so. I'm going to take this needle. These colors are so pretty together. I'm going to just reinforce it once. You know what? You probably don't need to do this step but I just always like to to be safe than sorry. I just don't want it to come apart, which it won't, but you know, doesn't hurt. It takes two seconds to do it. So go around that first row of needles, a little bit, or of stitches, a little bit more right there. Okay. Then I'm going to take these two pieces and I'm going to give them a good tie so that both sides come up close to each other in the middle, just like so. See, it's like a flat little pancake. One more knot. Then take the shortest one that you have and cut it off. Leave the longer one because we need to do some shaping. 
I'm gonna put that back onto your needle. We're gonna take this up and around, just over the edge like that, and back down into the center. Might be hard to do because we've got a tight knot on the other side, okay? And you'll see that we've got a, a line coming down here. We're gonna pull that tight. We're gonna then go around. I've got one, two, three. Let's see, we've got, we've got 12 rows here and I want five petals. So we're going to do two petals on each and then two of them will have three in between, okay? I think that math is right. So if we go out, if we do this one, then I'm gonna miss one, two rows. Put that in between those two rows, pop that down. And pull. Next one I'm going to do three. One, two, three. So you're going to bring that yarn in between those two rows. Pop it back down. Pull it through. And tighten it. Then I'm going to... So that's two and three. I'm going to do another one, two, three. So one, two, one, two. I'm going to do two. Two here. So do two the next time. We'll make this work. There we go. So I did two, then three, then two. Now I'm going to do three again. In between three rows. Let me grab these two. Got to get my two tails. There we go. And pull. All right, so that gave us five petals, but we're going to now go ahead and reinforce them. So we're going to go over that first row there, go down into the center. And pull it as tight as you can pull it. Then we're going to go over to where that other one was, that next one, right there. Pull it as tight as you can pull it. And then this next one. And the next one. I'm gonna, gonna, well, it's too late now, but I'm gonna put that right into that center, pull it through. It's getting tight because I've got so many layers in there. Pull that tight, and then the last one. I'm gonna try to get this over a little bit because this, this petal's a little bit bigger. So I'm going to just move it over right onto the line, onto the row there. Maybe that'll make a bit of a difference. I wasn't liking how it looked. Now it does look a little bit uneven, but you're gonna take your needle and you're just gonna play with those petals, just to spread them out, bring up the loops, because you've been squishing them as you've been pulling. So just take five minutes and straighten out all the petals. Oops, just don't snag them like what I just did. It's already looking better. So at the, each side of the petal and at the very top center. There, see, that looks more like a flower. And then you're gonna take your bunny. You're gonna, oh, see, look at that. Take the one, if you have one that's bigger than the others, put that at the very top. And I'm just going to put that on there so that so that this indent here of the petal goes over the eye. Not like this, because I don't want to cover the eye. So I'm intentionally going to put it like that, okay? And then you're just going to sew it on to the back. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to pick up a section of the head and just sew it on. Okay? Grab some more of the, the flower. And some more of the head and I'm going to keep sewing that on until I have it as tight as I want it 
And uh, then I'm gonna fasten off and hide my tail into the head and out the back and cut it off. All right, so now we're going to do the um, bow tie for our blue bunny. I'm doing the E-wrap cast on, and that's E-wrapping the first row, E-wrapping the second row. Well, they're not really rows there. Well, they are, but this is our cast on. So once we get our cast on, done. So this is my cast on row. I do not count that as my, in my row counts. I feel like I got a mess here. Hey, hey, hey. Push those down. That's my cast on. Now I'm going to e-wrap and work off seven rows. Okay, just like what we did for the, oops, that's my tail. Just like what we did for the um, flower, except for we did a drawstring cast on instead. Okay, but this one, we did an e-wrap cast on. We're gonna e-wrap seven rows, and then we're going to cast off like we've been doing all along. Okay, and once you have that off your loom, I will see you back. That didn't take too long, so now we're gonna just stretch it out. We're going to put our needle on the one end. I'm gonna just pull this a little bit, okay? Not much, because, because it's gathering, um, we're just going to pull it so it's even in width with this other end. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to sew it closed. Just a real basic seam. Nothing fancy. I'm going to go into that seam, or that stitch, then across into this stitch. Then come back, spread these out into this next one. And the next. Just like so. Just a real basic straight edge seam. Okay. Grab that last loop and into that previous one that we did and knot it off. All right, so we have that flat edge. Now what I'm gonna do is tie one more knot here. And I'm gonna hide this into my work. Cut it off. We're gonna do the same on the other side. This one's easier, you've got your loops there. From your ear up cast on. Go ahead, sew that one closed, and then I'll see you back. All right, so I tied one little knot there. I'm gonna give that another good stretch. I'm gonna just put it in half so I can find my halfway point, which is right there. So then I'm gonna just keep my thumb on there. I'm gonna bring this underneath up into that point. And I'm just gonna tie a little knot here because I don't want it to, by pulling on this, I don't want it to gather here. So this is what I always do. Now it's secured. If I pull on it, I'm not gonna compromise the look of that. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to gather this together just like so and wrap this around, pull it tight. Wrap it around, pull it tight, and we've got a beautiful little bow tie. Okay, so I'm gonna take this. Oh, I think that will be my front. I like that. They're both the same, but you've got your ripples here. So I like, the, I like, well, you have to decide. This is the flat end. Actually, I like this side better because it's got more texture. So I'm gonna take that around again. I'm gonna pick up the stitch right there. I'm gonna tie off into a knot to secure. Okay, then we're gonna take our little bunny <laughs> and we're gonna just grab the middle seam that's right here underneath the nose, easy to find. And we are going to sew this cutie on, okay? So I'm gonna pick that up, pull. I 
me and my short tails. Pick up some part of the neck, pull again. I'm gonna knot it off and I'm gonna hide my yarn tail. All done. <laughs> Isn't it adorable? I just, oh, just love it. And there, aren't they just the cutest little pair with their little tails? All right, my friends, aren't these just like so cute? So glad I made two of them. Um, I hope that you have enjoyed this tutorial. If you have, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, like, like the video and uh, subscribe if you haven't done so already. That would really help my channel grow. Um, if you would do both of those two things, then YouTube recognizes it and, and uh, my channel gets spread across a wider audience. So I would really, really appreciate if you would do that. Come on over to my Facebook group and uh, join that as well. The link will be in the description below. I'd love to have you as a part of that and to see your projects as well. All right, friends, thank you for joining me. Thank you for taking the time to spend with me. Um, I hope you enjoyed your project. Take care and we'll see you in the next video.